Okay, hi everyone, welcome back to another video. Tonight I'm going to go after my first galaxy of 2022, M94 or the Cat's Eye Galaxy. Okay, so like I said, I've got the big scope, the Skywatcher 190 Maxitoff Newtonian back out, um, and I'm going after my first galaxy of the year, M94, the Cat's Eye Galaxy. It's quite a distant target, so I think it's gonna be quite small in the frame, even at 1000 uh, millimeter focal length, um, but I'm gonna give it a go anyway, because it's in a great position. It's up all night long, um, so I should be able to photograph it all night and capture hopefully six maybe eight hours of data on it if the uh, the weather plays ball um, but I just want to say a massive thank you to anyone who has given me a suggestion about my focuser issue um, in my previous video so a couple of uh, videos ago I posted that I was getting some flex in my focus tube um, which was uh, you know giving me elongated stars and I got a huge amount of comments and suggestions from you guys and I can't thank you enough um, one of the reasons I love this hobby one of the reasons I love YouTube so much is the community is just really fantastic um, I, I said I was having an issue and I got loads of really helpful advice and suggestions. So you might have noticed I've made a few changes to the telescope, to the setup. Um, so let me just talk you through quickly the changes that I've made. Okay, so the first change and the most noticeable change is that I have moved and rotated the OTA so that my focuser and my camera is now pointing down. So hopefully that will help not only with balance, um, but also help with the flex issues that I was having. I had a lot of suggestions to do this um, from the retailers and you guys, the viewers as well. Now, the second change, which again, I hope will help um, make a difference and this makes a lot of sense when you think about it I had the focuser fully extended out to here and then I had the camera attached on so I'm keeping the focuser um, retracted and using um, spacers here in order to achieve back focus so um, this already seems a lot more solid seems like there's less flex um, and again, I had some really useful comments, I had two or three comments suggesting that, um, and a few people saying that they use this telescope and that's how they have managed to uh, overcome the issues. So all of the focuser is, is retracted inside this main unit here, um, and to achieve back focus, I've got these spaces here. Um, I haven't focused this yet, it's roughly in the right position, I think, um, but I will need to obviously focus that tonight. Another few changes, if you might, as you might have noticed, is um, I have a Losmandi dovetail plate, which um, I'm using to attach the telescope. I've actually had this, telescope, uh, this plate for a while, just haven't got around to fitting it. And then I've moved my old Vixen plate up the top, and I now have my guide scope um, and camera attached up there. So none of it's wired up at the moment, but I just need to... Uh, to do that, balance the, the setup and then hopefully I'll have a clear night. The, uh, the camera I'm using tonight is the 2600 MC Pro, so obviously I'm without my, uh, my mono camera, the 2600 MM Pro, at the moment as that is getting replaced from the third oil leak. But yeah, again, thank you so much for everyone who has made a suggestion about um, how I can overcome those issues I was having with the focuser. I will see tonight whether those have worked. <laughs> 
Okay, so I think I am now set up. I've got the scope nicely balanced. I've got everything connected up, I think correctly. Um, and I am good to uh, start trying to achieve focus with the camera. Now it's amazing when you actually take everything off your scope and everything off your rig, just how long it takes to actually set that back up. Um, that took nearly an hour, as you can probably tell by the fact that it's actually nearly dark enough to start seeing some stars now. Um, but hopefully I've got everything set up correctly. Hopefully this uh, set up with the, the camera facing down towards the mount um, will give me good results. So um, yeah, just got to wait 15, 20 minutes or so for it to get dark enough and then I can start to try and capture some data. So I'm a couple of hours into my imaging session and so far everything seems to be going quite well. I think the advice that you guys have given me about rotating the OAT and not extending that focus up quite so far has really paid off and the, the stars look really good. So I'm absolutely delighted that, um, that I've managed to, to solve this issue. So thank you so much to, to all you guys for your advice. So I don't think tonight is the best night to have um, set up the larger telescope the Skywatch 190 um, it was a few days after all of the storms that we had in the UK so it's still quite windy I don't know whether you can actually pick it up on the microphone but my guiding's been a little bit all over the place because of those gusts of wind and usually I've been around anywhere between 0.6 and 0.8 which is, is fine, I'm happy with that, but um, occasionally it's been spiking and there's definitely gonna be a few subs I'm gonna have to bin. If ever there was a night to use the smaller refractor, the Ascar 400 that I own, tonight would be it. But I just wanted to get back out in the garden and try out some of those um, tips and the, the advice that you guys have given me. Um, so hopefully I've got enough data in order to pull an image together. The weather forecast has changed a little bit. It was supposed to be clear all all night long um, but now I think clouds are going to come in around two three o'clock so I'm not going to capture as much data as I'd hoped but I'm going to uh, going to set up a time lapse now to see whether any cloud does go over and um, hopefully I can get enough data to pull together a half decent image there's that wind I mentioned earlier Okay, so as expected, I did have to get rid of quite a few of those images because of the wind. It really wasn't the right night to be using that big Skywatcher 190 Max Stoff Newtonian. There were gusts of wind up to about 30 miles an hour, so it was a bit of a silly idea. But actually, when the wind did die down, I was able to capture some data, and I think I got close to four, maybe four and a half hours worth of data, which is great. Um, those changes that you suggested really did help. Um, I, when there was no wind, the stars were looking really nice and round, so I'm really hoping that that has solved the issue. It'll be great to see whether that still is the case when I add the mono camera with the heavy filter wheel as well. But thank you guys so much for the suggestions. I do really appreciate it. But anyway, here is the final image of the Cat's Eye Galaxy. I hope you enjoy it. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below, and thanks for watching. I will see you in the next video.